Hey there, this is Daniel from Forge of Our Taco. Welcome to Duck Bricks. Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Duck Bricks. I'm Chris and welcome to part three of a Lego Bionicle Mockist interview series where I sat down with Daniel, AKA Forge of Artaka and took a look at his journey through building with Lego, some of the in-depth looks at his special builds itself, and now for part three, taking a special look at some work in progress mocks that he hasn't even published yet to give you a sneak peek as to what's to come. Now, Daniel was gracious enough to actually bring over a ton of his mocks over to me to actually sit down, take a look at, get hands on with, and share with all of you. So a massive thank you for that. And also thank you so much for this signed Bionicle comic by Greg Farshti, which I absolutely will be framing on my wall. This is just so, so cool to see. Because Daniel was actually one of the earliest members of BZ Power who had the chance to interview Greg Farshti himself at Comic Cons back in the day. So he actually was able to talk to Greg Farshti a ton and get a ton of signed comics so this is just super super cool but so without further ado i think it's time to now introduce daniel and talk a little bit more about the future mocks that he has planned and also unveiling a bit of a duck bricks related surprise which you will stay tuned for at the end of the video thank you all so much and let's go all right, and for this final Maka Spotlight interview section, we have Daniel, aka Forge of Artaka, back here again to talk about some unique builds that he is actually currently working on and will be posted once they're finalized. Last time, if you haven't checked them out already, part one did a full-on interview with you talking about your background, how you got into Bionicle and Lego and your building process. Part two, we took a much more in-depth look into many of the mocks here, especially a lot of the ones that have been published already, like the Lariska mock and Artaka and Tahu and the Shadowed One and all sorts of great things. But now we're going to unveil some special mocks actually coming up right now. You'll see some footage of the first time I have ever seen some of these builds. I can't wait to take a look. And if you can kind of introduce us and talk us through a little bit about what are these builds about? When are they coming out? What is your thought process behind making these? And what's your future plans for them? And of course, we'll be taking a closer look at these as well as you take them out. So let's go. So these are some upcoming uh, builds that I'm working on for um, kind of what I would love to do when I have the time is I would love to kind of do a short and truncated version of the 2006 to 2010 storyline uh, with kind of some additions added. Um, so this is kind of my pre, um, pre-mutation interpretation of, um, is that kind of, oh, that's okay. And that's the nice thing about Lego is that they come back together. Yes. And this is my completely original interpretation of Joven, Toa Joven. So hence the kind of, um, blue and red color scheme to mirror that nice. he is a, um, magnetized toe is a toe of magnetism that we don't oh, see very often cool. with a custom mask and one day when i have the time i would love to do a really fun series of these on kind oh. of dimension hopping uh and i have some really fun ideas for kind of where that would go story-wise and build-wise so these are some things that i would love to post in the near future that's probably what i'll do after my current series um so this is kind of where i'm currently at in the design process i typically do the weapons last so this is kind of the, the baseline that I'll build off of. Wow, these are so, so cool. And again, this is my first time seeing a lot of these. I love this particular mask here of the, the Vazon's face, if you can't easily tell. We'll do a close up later on, but he's got the Olmec on the back of there uh, to represent kind of it fused to the back of his skull, which is super, super cool. And it looks like this is a real Lego piece. I mean, this, this really looks does. like it was made for that. I agree. <laughs> and the designer did a great job because Oh, just like the original yeah. Ignica mask, it also doubles as an actual mask. So this could work as a mask of its own, but it just looks so clean. It looks like it really was meant to be on that design. And it's just a really cool marriage of story and, and design. So I'm really excited to kind of do a whole series just based on that character alone. Absolutely. And I love the, the magnetism elements of Jovan immediately like stuck out, stuck out to me here with the, the oranges and the blues. That looks, that looks really cool. And for especially his color scheme being super unique for his powers. That makes a lot of sense. And we even have, uh, yeah, Zaktan right here with the some of the Elec pieces on the back yes. there that really kind of are reminiscent of of that kind of type of spine. So, so very, the, very cool. The idea yeah. is that this would be kind of what he would have looked like before, uh, I think it's Spuria or Spuria, the Makuta, started experimenting on the... Um, 
on these Skakti. So oh. they have kind of a more animalistic kind of build afterwards. So they almost look like more bestial versions of Toa originally. So the idea is to kind of have them slowly move closer to this direction, but with the spines. I see that, that makes a lot of sense. Well, these are so, so cool. And as I understand, there is one final item that you have brought that I am personally very, very excited to see. So and why don't you give us a bit of an intro as to what that sure. is? Sure, so uh, I thought it'd be really fun because I think Chris at Duckbricks has been doing a really beautiful job of just reinvigorating the community. And oh. it's something that I've really Thank appreciated you. as both a fan and just as someone else that's in this community. I think you're just doing really great work and making a lot of people happy with what you're doing. So Thank you. As a token of my appreciation, I wanted to create not one, not two, but three variations of a Duck Bricks inspired oh. Matoran. <laughs> so we have little chronicler uh, Chris here. We have rebuilt 2003 style Chris the Chronicler here. <laughs> oh my and goodness. Then, last but not least, my personal favorite of the three, we have, I'll leave it up to you if this is a Whoa. Toa, if this is just a very, very large Matoran. But the kind of final form of Chronicler Chris here. Oh and my goodness. I hope. Thank you yeah. so much. This this means a lot. This is oh my goodness. This is wonderful. And, and you've got like the logo color scheme there with the, the blue background and and the orange bill and the yellow. Oh, this is this is fantastic. This is what a surprise. And we'll be taking a much closer look at these in a second. But I love the parts you should cheer, like the um the the invasion from below cockpits. Almost I don't know why, the, the way that they're shaped out make me feel like, like long duck bills or something. That was the goal. They were meant okay. to be duck inspired. So he's meant oh. to have kind of duckish feet with your color scheme of your logo. Um, very chronicler inspired based on all of your in-depth story videos uh, that are very appreciated. I love that you're introducing the story to a new audience. And um, yeah, I think, uh, I think of you with these characters. Oh. So. You're in the world now. Well, thank you so much. I will. Well, one of these is definitely going to be on the thumbnail for sure. I'll be. <laughs> oh, that's so I, I cannot wait to take a closer look at these. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. And then my final gift to you is um, I have a sign by Greg Farshti, original copy of one of the original comics, and this is my gift to you. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. I will. Some drawings tucked away. In oh, there. okay. <laughs> wow. I. This is. I have never had anything signed by any of the original makers of Bionicle before. This is absolutely something that I will treasure in my collection. And um, one of my plans for my collection is to make a museum out of things. And I think this would be a really cool thing to actually frame up when you're entering the Bionicle section because, oh, this is so, so cool. Thank you so much. This yeah, really hey, means a lot. You. Thank you. And you can check out his drawings as well. These are really cool. These are really, did you freehand these? Just yeah, like, those are freehanded. So when I was at uh, BrickCon wow. a couple weeks ago, um, I had a lot of time to pass. So I was drawing people. My rendition of the original to uh, Toa from 2001. So I'm thinking about maybe starting an Instagram for art. We'll see, we'll see. But uh, I think you should, if these drawings are anything to go <laughs> off of, yeah. <laughs> We can take a look at all of them here. Now, we actually did meet at BrickCon, so stay tuned. There will be a full-on BrickCon video coming out at some point once I manage to build all the sets that I got from BrickCon, <laughs> so that might not be coming out for a while, but absolutely was a great experience. Would recommend, uh, if you're in the Seattle or Washington area, uh, BrickCon, really great yearly convention in October. Would recommend checking it out. But I think with that, we've about summed things up. Now we will take a closer look at these in the studio right now, but thank you so, so much for being here again. And it has been such an honor taking a look at all of your builds with you and sharing your creations. Thank you, Chris. Um, you. So when I do have time, I like to build a bunch at one time and kind of create a story out of a series of mocks that are all kind of interrelated. So my next big project when I have time is to kind of do my own rendition of the 2006, 2007 storyline. So I'm gonna be starting with kind of exploring the history of Voyanui. So here I have kind of a predecessor to the Zoktan that we meet in the story. This would be the Zoktan that um, is kind of a um, predecessor to when the Skakti were um, like mutated by the Makuta. So this is what they would have maybe looked like before then. So I'm gonna have a variation of all the Paraka of not only what they looked like before the mutation, also what they look like as the Paraka. And then I will also have a stank version of each one because they each ah, get turned into serpents as yes. well. So I'm gonna have some fun with that. And then I'm also gonna do a little history of the island with uh, Joven. So this is my rendition 
of Toa Joven. I'm gonna be adding his team members as well. I'm really excited to kind of explore that uh, kind of corner of the mythos because I think it's a really fascinating one. It's kind of the first time that the Mask of Life was used. Uh, and then over here, I have uh, both a kind of inspiration for a future Vizon uh, series that I'm very excited to get into. Probably won't happen for quite a while, but I have some fun ideas for a dimension hopping Vizon. And then I have a very special Duck Bricks themed Matoran collection over here for Chris over here as a thank you for all the cool work he's doing for the community. Thank you so much for being here and of course putting these together. I think now is a great time to actually jump right into taking a look at each of these builds in depth to give my own mini Bionicle fan review on each of them. Let's go! So this right here is one of the kind of work in progress models here. Now the thing that is most striking to me about this is that this is basically the classic Vazon but with one pretty major special add-on on here. And so if you can tell us a little bit about how this came together and the mask itself, that would be great. Sure. So I cannot claim any kind of credit for this idea, but I was really inspired by other people kind of experimenting with different variations of the Olmac. A lot of people have done uh, Tridex versions and Vizon versions and just their own interpretation. Some people have done like Brutaka mutated versions. Um, so I saw a few people kind of playing around with this idea and I wanted to also kind of make my own attempt on this. So this is kind of the beginnings of a future Vizon series that is uh, exploring his ability to kind of dimension hop. And I was really amazed at the quality of this particular mask. And there are a few different variations of this mask, but you can find this one in particular at the Chronicles, the Chronicles vaults on Shapeways, and I believe this one was designed by Galva. This is just such a cool mask to see on this model itself, and it's just super cool because it definitely retains the concept of when Vazon wears a mask, it kind of goes on the back of his head and blends into him like it had with the Ignika, and now this Olmac, which is fused to him, makes total sense that he actually would have it kind of on the back of his head here. I think my favorite part about this mask is that actually you can see that the inside of it does have a stud attachment point, so you can just treat it like a normal mask if you wanted to, but then of course you do have have the dual piece for the Paraka type here, and then just rotating it around, it does work as its own version of the Olmac as well, kind of a Paraka-fied Olmac, so to speak. So that is probably one of the coolest things about this character in and of itself. It definitely does feel like the very basic form of Vazon with a few different add-ons for the legs to make him a little bit more animalistic and monstrous or mutated, but I just love the concept of this mask itself. That's just super cool to see. I think it now makes sense to take a look at some of the other unique builds on this kind of special showcase here. Okay, so next up here we have the pre-mutation Zaktan here, a very interesting build that does kind of integrate some of these spine elements that we know on the modern Paraka, but definitely does feel like something that is a little bit before what we got for the official set. So can you talk us through a little bit about the inspiration and build design of this particular model? Sure, so this is another work in progress for an upcoming series. Um, I'd love to kind of do my variation of the 2006 story. I would love to do kind of a deep dive on the origins of the Skakti, uh, the race that is later called the Paraka. And I was really inspired by actually the Ben 10 pieces um, that come in really interesting colors, mm. um, really underrated pieces. Um, teal is kind of hard to come by. And I also wanted to kind of explore what the Skakti might have looked like before the Makuta began to experiment on them. So the basic concept behind this was exploring what Zoktan might have looked like before the Makuta began experimenting on the Skakti. So this is kind of a more upright, um, almost more regal version of the what mm. will later become a very hunched over, very mysterious and almost kind of goblin-esque character. I love the way that you actually worked in the inspiration here. I think my favorite thing is using the canister masks as the Paraka heads themselves, which always was a, a very strange inclusion and oddity for me to see those being just randomly stuck on the canisters, having their own unique molds and whatnot was super interesting to see. And as you said, this really does feel like a proto version of the Paraka and the Skakni with very upright legs with the Ben 10 limbs just feeling very organic to me. This definitely does feel a lot less mechanical and more like a fully organic organic being who is wearing some golden armor. I really like the usage of the Elec pieces on the top here, which really give it a lot more character in terms of the spine on the back, but still not quite the hunched back of the standard Paracas, so really cool to see that. And I am very impressed with the way that you've mounted the Vaki torsos here as the actual limb attachment points. That's probably one of my favorite parts about this is that you've integrated the uh, the Kangu Mari or the Kangu Mari uh, type of torso piece here with the Vaki torsos at an mm -hmm 
angle to give this a very unique silhouette and frame to his body and build, which is very, very interesting to see. Thank you. I think now it makes sense to take a look at our next build. Up here we have the modified version of Toa Jovan featuring a very unique color scheme, really kind of bringing in the magnetic look and feel with the oranges and blues, and wearing a specialized version of the Kanohi Kaden, the Mask of Flight, which makes a lot of sense to me because it doesn't really make sense to have just the organic modified version. Having a more standard version is really cool for this model itself. So obviously this is a work in progress, he doesn't really have his signature weapons yet, but this really is capturing the overall look and feel of the color scheme in the build and if you can tell me a little bit about the design inspirations of this character where you got the mask from who modeled it and what you're kind of going to plan for the future of this mock that would be really great sure so this is another work in progress this is going to be part of my upcoming 2006 series kind of exploring kind of both the past and present of Voya Nui kind of jumping into the story mid 2006 um, so I always thought the character of Jobin was really fascinating he has a really rich history um, but we don't get to see him very much. And then when we do get to see his actual kind of combiner set, it's kind of a, a mix match of different concepts that I think would have worked really, really well had he been a different element. And I always thought it was very strange that he was a magnetic user. He had powers over magnetism, but there was nothing in his design to really signify that. So mm -hmm. I wanted to kind of update his color scheme to give him this alternating red and blue, or I guess orange and blue, um, kind of translucent color scheme to bring to mind the idea of he's playing around with two sides of magnetism. That is such a cool concept, and I think one of my favorite things to see here is that you actually are using the infamous red pins and even some of the blue pins to great effect here, because obviously you do want to have that strange dichotomy between red and blue pieces scattered throughout the build here, because that definitely draws more attention to the magnetism aspect. So that is probably one of my favorite things here is the way that you've actually used the, the colors here to bring in the different magnetism parts of him, and I cannot wait to see what the weapons will look like I, I i certainly would love to see the way that you would reimagine his kind of blaster like weapons and blades and all the craziness that the original model had just sticking out of him that would be just super interesting to see so i can't wait to see your upcoming post on this model thanks i'm really excited to work on it and the mask is actually from the chronicles vault on shapeways this is another design by galva and uh, i'm also excited to build the weapon it's probably going to be something close to a, a wookie blaster Ooh, okay, I love the sound of that. <laughs> well, stay tuned to his Instagram for that, and I think with that, we just have one final series of builds to get to, something I personally have been super, super excited to review. So last, but definitely not least, we have the three different versions of the Duck Bricks Matoran Tohunga style build, 2003 rebuilt style, and of course, maybe somewhat of a Toa style build, whatever you want to make of it. So these are very, very special mocks to me because obviously they are integrating the color scheme of my logo, which really does mean a lot. It is so cool how you were able to just draw in some of the stuff, which frankly, when I was putting together the logo, the, the blue was just kind of a random background that I chose that had some contrast the yellow but just looks so good on these models themselves i definitely want to take a lot of photos of these to try to recreate them for myself at home because i i certainly want to kind of have these on display so very very cool and if you could talk us through a little bit about the design process of these models as well as the origins of the first mask there which is a movie edition komau very cool to see that would love to hear more of, about the design process sure so this was kind of my love letter to the work that you're doing um i've just been Thank really you. Really pleased with how you've really energized the community so this is my thanks to you the custom mask is from Rothenok on Shapeways and uh, the basic design philosophy was building the little guy first mm. and being very satisfied with the color scheme and I was working on my Matoran series at the time and was playing around with some other designs so then the second one came around as an alternative and I was like okay well that kind of looks like the natural evolution of the same character. So what if there was a third iteration as well? Mm -hmm. And that's when I started working on the kind of Toa size version. And um, it's hard for me to pick which one I'm most pleased with, but it might be the Toa one. I'm really, really happy with how the staff turned out. It's a completely yeah. custom build. I pretty much pulled out the colors that went with your logo <laughs> and just started kind of assembling um, proportionally piece by piece, really trying to keep the duck theme with the feet especially. 
Yeah, I love the way that the feet turned out because especially using the uh, the Hero Factory seat pieces there. I don't know, it just really looks like a duck build to me. And of course you have the uh, the Komao itself, the mask being used somehow just feels very reminiscent of kind of the, the idea that I had in mind of a Bionicle-fied version <laughs> of, of what my logo would be. So that is just so cool to see. And also the great usage of these Eternal staff pieces, which were kind of a piece introduced for the Lego Marvel Eternal sets. They have a very nice open lessened look and feel to them that just feels very cool as the staff weapon itself and one thing that really impresses me is that i did not give you a lot of good uh, colors to work with here i think it's very <laughs> difficult to come up with a character that has a very jarring color scheme such as my logo with the orange and the yellow and the blue but you really pulled it off here i mean the colors do really feel that they are blended together very nicely you definitely have the duck aesthetic even with like the way that this armor piece is used here i think definitely does kind of feel reminiscent of a bill for the CCBS piece there, and I just love the usage of the Tohunga hands as kind of shoulder armor. That's just a really interesting building technique, plus all of the different details that went into making the legs of the Toa. You see, I've even got some waist articulation there, which is very, very nice to see. And overall, just very, very impressive builds that truly do mean a lot to me. Thank you so much for kind of immortalizing the Duck Bricks <laughs> logo in these Bionicle builds. It does mean so, so much, and this is absolutely going to be something that I certainly... Oh, whoops, there goes the that version but something that i definitely want to make myself and actually build myself in my collection i think this one might be one of my favorites just because of that great piece <laughs> usage on the feet there literally i mean this is just i've never had somebody come to me and make a version of a character based on my logo so this just means so so much and i really appreciate how you really weaved in the the chronicler staff there which is something that i've been trying to do with the uh, the bionicle retold series and whatnot to introduce a new series of uh, a new fans of bionicle into the world and to get old fans kind of re-interested in the older lore so that just means a lot. Very cool to see the different kind of accessories here. A lot of thought went into these. So thank you so much. Thank you, Chris. We appreciate you too. All right. And I think with that, we have summed up our look at the special sneak peek preview models here. So stay tuned to Forge of Artaka's Instagram to see more of these coming out in posts very soon or at some point in the future. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. All right, and with that, that about finalizes our Mockist Review Spotlight series. It has turned from day to night outside. <laughs> we have been recording different videos all day, so this has been a fantastic time kind of experiencing your mocks with you. Thank you again so much for building the Duck Breaks tribute mocks. These really do mean a lot, and it is so, so cool to see them. I certainly will be photographing these extensively to try to recreate these uh, myself at home with my own pieces. So very, very cool to see these. And of course, getting some sneak peeks at some of your future projects has always been really great as well. Now, before we wrap up here, do you have any final closing thoughts or kind of th anything you want to say to the audience about how you put things together or what Bionicle means to you? Anything like that that you think? Sure. <laughs> Uh, I just want to say thank you to all the people who are part of this community, both the the old guys and the old gals and all the newbies. Um, the love means a lot, and this is a very special um, kind of fan base to me. It's been a really foundational part of my life. Uh, as long as I can remember, this has been kind of part of my childhood and my uh, adult life, and seeing it still bring happiness to people all over the world, regardless of culture and age, like there's not a lot of things that do that, especially for a series that is no longer active. So I wanna say thank you to the community. I wanna say thank you to uh, Christian Faber, who is still very active in the community and who kind of kicked all this off. I wanna say thank you to Chris for inviting me to do this with them and for kind of bringing uh, new life into the community. And I hope it continues, I think it will. And uh, thank you guys for your time. Thank you all so much for being here. Be sure to like and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon. And definitely go check out Forge of Artakas and Travels of Takua's Instagrams in the link in the description below. Definitely go show them some love. Thank you so much for being here, bringing these over. I know it was a long, long journey for you to get here, so it really means a lot that you came all this way out to kind of showcase all these and share it with all of you, the viewers. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy this three-part series. And if you are a builder in the Washington state area, do contact me. I'd love to do more collaborations like this and really kind of introduce Moccas and builders to uh, the rest of the audience. So this has been a fantastic video series. And I would love to hear from you in the comments if 
you want to see more stuff like this, interviews with builders and taking a look at their creations. And also let me know if you want to see more collaborations with Daniel in the future, because I certainly would love to. It is great that we are in sort of the same area remotely, uh, which means that we can always meet up again and do more videos like this. So thank you all so, so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this three-part series. And again, if you haven't already, check out the first two parts in the description below. All right, and with that, our time with Daniel has come to a close. This sums up part three of our three-part interview mockist review series, where part one summarized his journey with LEGO, part two went in-depth into some of the mocks he's already built, and finally, this part three covered some of the special sneak peeks, plus the three different versions of the Duckbricks, Matoran, and Toa builds that he made specifically themed for the channel. Now, Daniel has just one last surprise for all of you, and that is in the form of these special Toa Mata freehand drawings. Now, he was actually able to draw these when I met him at BrickCon just this past year in Seattle, Washington. It's one of the biggest LEGO conventions out there. He had a ton of free time to just sit down and freehand some specialized artwork drawings of the classic Toa Mata. And I am incredibly excited to announce that any prize winner of the Bionicle Fanon Contest, whether upcoming or past, will be getting these if I haven't shipped out your prizes already. So the Dinosaur Bota Magna Fanon Contest winners will be each getting some special illustrations from Daniel himself of the classic Toamata. And of course, I will continuously hand these out for the contest winners until I've gone through every single one. So thank you so much, Daniel, for providing these. These are really great illustrations, just some really quick, nice freehand stuff of the Toamata themselves. And of course, thank you so much to Forge of Artaka for being willing to do this, sitting down for an interview, bringing over his mocks. And if you're in the Washington State area and are a Bionicle Moccas, do contact me because I definitely am open to doing more stuff like this. It's been so, so fun to meet and interact with different LEGO and Bionicle community members, and it's always super fun to have other folks into lego on the show so thank you all so much for being here let me know down in the comments below what have been your favorite builds by forge vartaka do check out his instagram accounts linked in the description below thank you all so so much for tuning in and bye for now